scales perfectly with War for Cybertron Unicron. Ha <laughs> ha! Hello, my baby! Hello, my honey! Hello, my rag, my gal! Sunday, you kissed my wife! Baby, my heart's on fire! The studio series of figures based on Transformers movies is back with another 1986 movie character, Scourge. The 86 movies was infamous for killing off a number of beloved Generation 1 characters in the first act, including Optimus Prime, though he didn't stay dead. <coughs> Anywho, a number of Decepticons were injured in the Battle for Autobot City scenes, dumped into space on the trip back home, but plot armor abounds, and the unlucky Decepticons were found by the planet-sized Unicron, who rebuilt Megatron into Galvatron, and reconfigured the other Decepticons into his new army. Among those created were Scourge, billed as the Tracker, and his huntsmen, the Sweeps, who all looked exactly like him. Gripe about lack of imagination if you will, but didn't they do the same thing with the Seekers? Anywho, having finally circumnavigated Hasbro's crummy distribution network, we have obtained a copy of the Studio Series Scourge figure for review. It comes in a Voyager-sized box with plastic display window that shows off the contents. With character art on the side panel, both modes are profiled on the back against a funky 80s-style perspective grid, and boasting that it's big screen inspired and one of the heralds of Unicron. Cecil B. DeVille close-up is on the other side panel. Now let's get Scourge out of this box and herald his review. <laughs> out of box, Studio Series 1986 Scourge comes with his instruction booklet which has no stats, a blue weapon accessory, and a blue corkscrew-esque fire blast accessory. And this is Scourge in his alt mode. It's supposed to be some kind of spacecraft, but it looks more like a boat. It's got no wings, no cockpit, none of the stuff that you would normally see on a vehicle, be it land or air. Only these dealy bobs at the top, and the grill work on the back. Give any indication that this might have some kind of thrust. It could also be a bar of soap because of its lack of features. It's mostly smooth on the exterior, with some sculpted etching and lines in it. Just to break the monotony, but not much. And as you can see, he's blue. Mostly this deep sort of royal blue, and a more lighter powdery blue on the fringes. But with no other colors except for the silver on the Decepticon logo. He's got some heft to him and feels solid with no rattling. For the most part, the robot parts are well hidden, except for the obvious feet at the back and the legs underneath. You can see more of the robot, like the arms underneath these gaps, and even more if you just swing open these little panels. Peekaboo! At least the head is hidden, but like with his old Generation 1 figure, all you have to do is swing up this cowling, and the head is revealed in all its glory. Peekaboo! There are no wheels or landing gear, so all you can do is pretend to fly it around, or plonk it onto a level surface and... look at it. There are two fireability to ports on either side of the ship. There are also two on the back, for plugging in weapon or fire blast accessories, and you can squeeze fire blasts onto any of these turbines at the top. The 5mm ports are compatible with any of the War for Cybertron Siege weapon accessories. You can also plug fire blasts into the tip of the rifle for explosive joy. <laughs> to transform to robot mode, start by popping loose these panels very slightly from the side. Then start to unfold the wings by untabbing them from the back portion. There is a tab and groove set here. The wing then hinges upwards on this double hinged panel set. Then underneath the ship you can unfold these wing panels. With all this kibble separated so it won't snag on anything, it gives you leverage to kind of put your fingers underneath the panel here at the side, then lift up and fold out. There's a double hinged set inside here, which allows it to fold down when transforming to alt mode. But for the robot mode, fold them up and out of the way, 
and be gentle about it because those hinges are also kind of thin. You don't want to break them. Now that the ship has been effectively split in half, undo the cowling near the robot head. It will fold up on this hinge. Continue folding this portion until it is flush, then fold it up and into the robot chest. You see the head is still trapped back here, but not for long. This panel here at the back is tabbed into the legs. Untab it. And then you will see that there is a set of hinges and folds which allow the head to swing up. With these portions folded inside the robot chest, you can angle this hinge set upwards, fold this hinge section under the robot neck, then angle the whole thing inwards, and hide this portion of the hinges underneath the neck. This will snap his head into place until it is nice and snug. Angle the wings out of the way if you need to for the next steps. Fold this panel down, then pull this ringed section loose from the back of this turbine. Angle it all down and peg it into place. This portion will snap down into the back panel. Give this dealy bob on top of the head a 180 degree twist. Then as you can probably guess, you untab the arms from the sides of the legs. This hinge set swivels upward and tabs into place at the shoulder. Then you just swivel the arm down. Unfold the feet, unfold the heel spurs from inside the foot, then there's the wings. Use this double hinge set to invert them, and fold them up and inwards until they kind of double up. Fold down the turbine so that they're flush to the side. Then it's simply a matter of folding and angling the wings in any manner that you think looks boss. And this is Scourge in his robot mode. As with Generation 1, there isn't much that sets him apart except for two things. His robotic beard and mustache, and his pair of red bull wings. Aside from that and his more claw-like fingertips, he's simply a biped like most other Transformers. But he is still blue and light blue. And again, the only other color is the silver on his Decepticon badge. He's got more detail than the Generation 1 figure had, certainly, and he looks much more like his animated counterpart. Frankly, the G1 figure was kind of crummy and only vaguely resembled his appearance in the film. The 86 movie had a weird obsession with making bearded robots, but at least Scourge wasn't so exaggerated. But here the robot mode is well proportioned and decently detailed with ridges on the arms and abs to set him off. The hands do look pretty cool with these claw tips. He's got decent heft, and all the limbs appear to be solid with no lazy hollowness. That's probably because all of his parts simply tuck inside the wing sections, so there was no need to hollow them out for transformation hinges. And there's very little kibble, with the exception of course being these wings. They had to do something with the hull of the boat, I guess, and these bat wings are as good an attempt as any. But handling them, they feel a bit flimsy. I'm not sure how long they'll hold up over time. They feel pretty thin and potentially brittle. One errant snap, and his wings are clipped. Several more 5mm ports open up in robot mode. One on each shoulder, one on each forearm, one at the base of each shin, one under each foot and one on the back of each wing. You can also plug fire blast accessories into his mini gun on top of the head, and into the tip of his own weapon. There's no shortage of options for arming him up with weapons, whether they're from the War for Cybertron Siege line, or any other accessories that you happen to have lying around. So you can load him up with spare micromasters, weaponizers, fire blasts, and other accessories. For articulation, the head is ball socketed and would rotate 360 degrees except that it bumps into the collar section, but it will waggle up and down a bit, and the gun on top of the head will rotate independently of the head. Each arm will rotate 360 degrees or until it bumps into the wings, and there is a hinge on top which allows the arm to swivel outwards and upwards. Upper arm swivel is included. Each arm is single jointed at the elbow for 90 degree rotation. And though it's a bit stiff, the hands will swivel in their sockets. You wouldn't think it with all the wing kibble, but he does have a 360 degree waist rotation. Each leg will rotate fully backwards and forwards until it bumps into stuff at the pelvis. And it is mushroom pegged for upper thigh rotation, but it's a very stiff joint, so be careful not to snap anything. The knees will rotate backwards 90 degrees. Each heel spur will tilt forwards and backwards. 
And there is an ankle pivot which will allow the feet to tilt inwards about this far. And the wings are also articulated. There is this double hinge set on the inside that will allow the wings to flap inwards and outwards. They will also angle inwards on this secondary hinge. And this portion here will also flip in and out. So it's your choice. If you want to, you can splay the wings outwards all the way, or curl them around the arms to make a kind of mini cloak. Yeah, I'm not buying it either. So in spite of all the wing baggage, you can get excellent range of motion out of Scourge. The upper thighs and the wings get in the way a little bit, but it's nice that they hinge them so that you can at least have some options. <laughs> For size comparison, here is Voyager 1986 Studio Series Scourge, next to Voyager Earthrise Quintesson Judge. Here is Voyager Studio Series Scourge, beset with Titans Return Legend Size Gnaw Sharktacons. And here is Voyager Studio Series Scourge, next to a box of always feminine hygiene product. Have you seen them? The darn thing has wings. <laughs> Is it nice to see an updated Scourge figure? Yes. Is it worth the hassle of navigating Hasbro's failed distribution network to find one? Probably not. Positives for Studio Series Scourge are excellent sculpting, good proportions, neatly applied paint and decals, an array of accessory ports, strong articulation, and a transformation that's not hugely difficult. He holds poses well, there's no hollowness to detract, and the wings do contribute to a more imposing silhouette. Negatives are the alt mode has no landing gear. There are gaps underneath the spaceship. The wings are worrisomely thin. Some of the joints feel a little bit too tight. And the cold color palette makes one think he must be a minion of Jack Frost. The shell former aspect will make you tut your lips. In the end, you spend less time transforming the robot and more time simply hiding it inside his wingy egg shell. But if you are lucky enough to stumble across this figure on store shelves, it's well worth a look. Or maybe you can just fence it on eBay like everybody else. I give 1986 Studio Series Voyager Scourge 6 out of 10 deaths. He's above average, but only just. If you refuse me, honey, you lose me, then you'll be left alone, oh baby, tell the boy, and tell me I'm your own. <laughs>